First is I want students to understand evolutionary theory so that they can apply it to daily decisions in their lives. Second, I want them to accept evolution so that they will apply it to decisions in their daily lives. Um, and then third, I want to offer them a way to reconcile these two ways of knowing. So I want to go back really quickly to the first two, the understand and accept. I often get asked in my research, why do you care so much that they accept? Isn't it enough that they understand? And our students understand really well. And I would offer my argument that no, it's not enough that we just understand. Understand how to apply gospel principles to our lives. Learning and living his restored gospel in our daily lives. Consider the scripture study we've been taught to incorporate into our daily lives. Or consider the personal prayers and the kneeling family prayers that are regular practices for faithful Latter-day Saints. This is a gospel of joy and holiness in everyday life. Holiness sets things apart. It takes conscious and consistent effort to fill our daily lives with His words, His teachings, His truths. We simply cannot rely upon information we bump into on social media. This is what we found on the left. So you can see that we're very similar. We have a, a pretty good sampling of what the Pew Forum was sampling as far as acceptance goes. And the same trends are there. All right, so with this data, though, we could add in a whole bunch of other survey questions and get more information out of these individuals. And so one of the things we wanted to know is, does knowledge of evolution correspond to acceptance? Because this is one of the things that in the literature is very mixed. Some people find that it's a direct correlation. Some people find that there's no correlation or it's negative. And so we wanted to know, is there any correlation? And surprisingly, those who reject evolution the most know the most. So that was kind of interesting to us. So there doesn't seem to be a relationship between your knowledge of, of evolution, at least in our sample, your knowledge of evolution and whether or not you accept the theory. Um, and so, oh, and by the way, we use the knowledge of evolution exam. It's a published inventory, deals with a bunch of different components of, of evolution. All right, so that was an interesting question. And then we thought, okay, well, we wanna know if religiosity and your acceptance of evolution. And it turns out that there's not. In the data we collected, there's no relationship between your scientific reasoning ability and your religiosity or your scientific reasoning ability and the acceptance of either of these viewpoints. What that means is that you can have really great scientific reasoning skills and still outright reject evolution. Or you can have really poor scientific reasoning skills and totally accept it as a valid theory. That there is no relationship, which I find encouraging. It goes against a, a sort of conception in the field among scientists that, that, oh, if I can just get them to think better, they will accept evolution. And I think it also, that idea contributes to this sort of condescending approach that some scientists take in teaching about evolution, that, oh, you don't accept because you're dumb, and I'm going to make you think better, and I'm going to make you smarter, and therefore you'll accept. And so we see that there's no relationship there between them. So that was one where we said, okay, that's not it. There's got to be something else that's getting in the way. Um, and so then we looked at age. 